Um, hey guys, my name's Michael. Uh, I'm with Overland Bound and we started this community back in 2010 and the whole basis of the community is that adventure is necessary. So we're an Overland community that supports one another and uh, we're here at Expo East having a great time meeting up with some friends. Um, basically the core, of, the hub of the community is, is our website. We've got uh, forums, uh, an event planner called Rally Point, which is overland specific, and then a resource map, which uh, shows you not only places to go, but different resources that you need while you're overlanding. So user-generated content, the community contributes to it. You can also send out a community um, managed SOS from the website. If you go someplace, you get yourself in a little bit of trouble. But basically our passion and everything we're all about is adventure is necessary. We're gonna support you. When you go out there and you have adventures, things happen. So we're there to take care of you. And that's, that's basically what we're all about. Hopefully you get out there, you see a little bit of adventure and we'll see you on the trail. Uh, my name is Will and we're here at Overland Expo East 2019. This is my fifth gen forerunner, uh, and you're watching Waypoint Overland TV. So this is my 2016 uh, fifth gen Forerunner SR5, um, and let's just do a little walk around here, and I'll show you what I've done to it. Um, to start, um, I've got a worn uh, Xeon 10 winch with a synthetic line, and uh, I've got this Factor 55 link on here, which just uh, is the way that I prefer to link things up when I. Uh, and required to winch. Uh, in the fifth gen Forerunner, it's very difficult to get in and plug that in, so I've got a remote control for that so that I can operate it without having to take everything apart. Lighting wise, I've got some Baja uh, lights here, uh, and, and these other these light bars are from Cali Raised LED, uh, and they provide pretty good light. This one uh, is mediocre, but the one up top provides great lighting and I've got some rigid uh, ditch lights. Um, inside the hood here, um, I've installed a Genesis off-road dual battery system, which is key to keep all the aftermarket accessories wired on a secondary battery versus having it on the uh, factory system. Tried to get everything separated and I'm controlling the majority of my aftermarket items with an S-Pod uh, Bantam to give me as much control of those items as possible. It also gives me the Bluetooth capability with my phone to be able to turn the refrigerator on or off or whatever when I'm somewhere else. Um, also under the hood we've got an ARB dual air compressor. I can use that obviously to uh, air up my tires when I need to, but uh, I've also um, got front and rear ARB lockers that I had recently installed and this controls those air lockers. I also re-geared to 456 gears underneath when I did the lockers. Um, so it's an SR5 but it's kind of a sleeper vehicle a little bit when it comes to that. The snorkel was one of the first modifications that I did myself so I had to 
cut into the side of the truck and uh, that was always it's always scary you know everybody thinks they're gonna cut and damage their thirty thousand dollar plus vehicle uh, but this panel and had to have this panel painted and replaced is about five or six hundred dollars so once I turned it into a five or six hundred dollar problem it was a lot easier to cut in and get this and fortunately and unfortunately I've used it I um, sunk the truck in a river in Arizona and fortunately no water got inside the engine or inside any of the components and I have the snorkel to thank for it so um, that's good all right, so I've got some BFG KO2s on uh, some Method race wheels here that I've beat up, and they're great lightweight wheels, and these tires, which are a little bit heavier, very tough, and have done a great job uh, for me. This is my second set of KO2s. I first had two 75-17s, and now I have two 85-17s, which is a little bit larger tire. And when you go to that large of a tire on a 4Runner, you can get some rubbing. So I've had to make some minor adjustments under here. We've done a body mount chop, and we've also added adjustable upper control arms so that when it's fully aligned, we can get that, that alignment as straight as possible. Um, I've got RSG armor on, or RSG sliders here. Uh, the rest of my armor is from CBI. Um, I really liked the way the RSG ones looked. I like the way that they kick out by the tire. It's helped me several times when I'm up against a tree to just kind of push the vehicle around. Um, and they've held up really well. They bolt directly onto the frame uh, and are super sturdy. I've had flat tire and had to jack off of the sliders before and they held up wonderful. Uh, the front bumper, all the armor underneath and the rear bumper are from CBI. So I, I did go with a different company for those products. I'm super happy with them. Uh, up here I've got a Prinsu rack with uh, Overland Vehicle System 180 degree awning, uh, which is nice and convenient. Swings right out and gives me a nice place to camp up here. And up top we have a Roof Nest Eagle tent, uh, which is awesome because I'm kind of a lazy camper and I like to get to my place and be set up real quick. And I can be in bed in about a minute and a half. This will pop up, and then it goes down in about five minutes. And so super convenient, super easy to set the awning and the tent up very quickly. <laughs> so this is my CBI dual swing out rear bumper. It's great because it holds all the things that I need for it to hold and because I have this tent that takes up the entire top of the rack I don't have a whole lot of room to store things up top so I've got a spare tire out from underneath and on the back obviously supporting some max tracks uh, traction mats uh, I've got this optional fold down table which is where I do all my cooking and um, on this side, there is another optional table, but I did not choose to have that option. Um, I've mounted my shovel here, and then on the back, you can see I've got uh, five gallons of spare gas and five gallons of additional water. And we've also have a place to mount our Highland Jack back there. Um, originally, I had a Gobi rack, and so I sold the rack and was able to buy the Prinsu rack, which is able to keep my tent down a little bit lower profile, which gives me a little bit better gas mileage, and I think it just looks a little bit better. Uh, but the rack, the, the ladder comes in handy for climbing up there and setting things up and, and putting things away. And, and I think it looks pretty cool, so I've kept it. So since uh, I have the bumper and everything back here, the back side of my truck is really my kitchen and uh, where all the magic happens here. Um, I have the table down. I've got this pull out that I built here. I'm not a really good carpenter, so it doesn't look beautiful, but it does function. Um, pulls out, and I've got a kitchen. Store all my utensils in here the cutting board, stove, additional gas, um, hand sanitizer, a lot of little things go in there. Um, and then I have this refrigerator, which is from Roof Nest as well. It came for free on a Black Friday special, and it does the trick. Um, 
Got another air compressor back here on the back that I had installed to begin with before I put the ARB in. It's a bi air compressor, it works great. But uh, I wanted the ARB one up front when I put the ARB lockers in. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but I have this Vi air compressor, which is a great compressor, installed back here. And then underneath where the spare tire used to be is where I've got the air tank. So um, if you're looking for an air compressor option that is not an ARB option, that's also a great option. It works really well. Um, Got this one other drawer here, which I store additional tools and camping gear in. I actually used to store recovery gear in here, and when I sunk my truck in the river, uh, all of this was underwater, and so to be able to get to my recovery gear, I had to open the back of the truck and open this, allow more water in to be able to get my recovery gear. So learned a lesson. I keep my recovery gear in a bag where it's handy, and it's in the back seat so I don't make that same mistake. Um, it's expensive to pay to fix your vehicle after it sinks in a river. So inside the vehicle, um, this is where I spend most of my time. Uh, we've got WeatherTech mats that I put throughout the vehicle. It's just nice. I don't worry about any dirt or debris, obviously, because it's a mess down there, and I can just pull them out and pressure wash them off after a, a long, dirty weekend. Um, I told you I had ARB front and rear lockers, and so I've got an air compressor switch here up front for the dual ARB compressor, and then front and rear locker. Um, I tried to get switches that were as OEM as possible, so that just kind of looked a little bit more clean. I've got enough ridiculousness around here. It's just nice to have some things that are neat. I also installed the Anytime front and rear camera. Uh, it's a really, really cool system, and it's really awesome when you're off-roading um, to be able to hit a button and see all the things that are out of your f field of vision. So check out anytimebackupcamera.com if you get a chance for that. I have my S-Pod display here, and uh, you know, can turn on and off all my light ac accessory lights as well as control the refrigerator from here. Um, then I have some RAM mounts to hold my phone. Um, an iPad, which is really big and clunky, but this is what operates my Gaia GPS, and so it's nice and easy to see. And then sometimes I keep my laptop computer in here so that I can actually do some work. This really doesn't have anything to do with overlanding. Uh, I mostly use it for work, but it's nice and convenient to, to have that here and be able to use that as well. So thanks for taking the time to check out my rig. Um, you can check me out at Instagram at n.c.wild uh, if you get a chance, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the trail.